Welcome into Locked On Phillies. In today's episode, Andrew Painter's injury, well, it's not the only one that the Phillies have to worry about in terms of starting pitchers. We'll do a little World Baseball Classic update and jump into questions about, well, how you felt about Andrew Painter's injury as far as concern level wise. A packed episode of Locked On Phillies. <laughs> Are Locked On Phillies, your daily Philadelphia Phillies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, this is Locked On Phillies. I am your host, Connor Thomas. So happy to be with you here as your host of uh, Locked On Phillies. You can also hear me on 97.5 The Fanatic on the radio. You can hear me on NBC Sports uh, Television, NBC Sports Philadelphia on the TV side, and you can see me on there as well. Heck of an intro already, Connor. I'm stumbling over my words. You know where to find me. Credentialed Philadelphia Phillies media member, former collegiate baseball player. And I want to thank you for making Locked on Phillies your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast, your team every day, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, everyone, for checking out Locked on Phillies. I really, really appreciate it. Let's jump into today's episode because there are now some concerns with the Philadelphia Phillies rotation. I know I put out the uh, episode this weekend on Saturday about Andrew Painter and what's going on with his sprain and his UCL. By this point, everyone knows about it. It was big news around uh, Philadelphia and kind of around baseball that the top pitching prospect has an issue with his UCL. So a lot of people already know about that, but I put out that episode. If you want to go check that out when you're done with this one, you can see that on the YouTube and podcast. So it was the most recent episode, but he's not the only injury that the Philadelphia Phillies have to worry about. And Ranger Suarez was recalled last week from the World Baseball Classic. So Suarez was supposed to pitch for Venezuela. He felt some tightness in his forearm, his left forearm. So uh, the Philadelphia Phillies said, okay, uh, go ahead and come on back. And Ranger Suarez was like, yeah, sure, fine, no problem. I'm done World Baseball Classic. Uh, Arm feels a little bit weird. Let's get back to Clearwater. So we arrived back to Clearwater this weekend. And he went ahead and decided to, well, I guess the team decided to start resting him, but they they came to the conclusion, let's rest a couple days and see how that goes because you have forearm uh, stiffness or forearm tightness is how it was described. Now, initially, Andrew Painter's injury was just described as elbow discomfort or, yeah, I guess elbow discomfort was the first report when they initially knew that there was something weird going on with Andrew Painter's elbow. And then that turned into a sprain in the UCL that's costing him probably about two months worth of a season uh, as far as ability to play at the major league level. So that started as something that people weren't hugely concerned about. And then really quickly we realized it was something a little bit more serious than just like, oh, my elbow's sore, take a week off. The good news about the Rangers for his injury is that it seems like it's not too serious. He said himself, he's not too concerned about it when he was, uh, when he met with media after returning to Clearwater for spring training uh, in lieu of the World Baseball Classic. So the plan for him is to just rest a couple days and then try to get back on the throwing program, see how it feels then. It may just be slight overuse. It may be that early season, just like twinges of stuff. He wasn't totally stretched out and needs to come back and just kind of restart his throwing program. I don't know what it is. We'll get more reports over the coming days as the how concerned we should be about Ranger Suarez. The concern, though, doesn't lay with any individual pitcher. I'll tell you in just a second what exactly the concern is with these two injuries and less painter, but more Suarez and some things that we should be worried about with the Philadelphia Phillies finishing out spring training and heading into the early part of the season. But first, I want to commend Ranger Suarez for what he did making this decision. Uh, It's a really, really important thing for some of these guys to be able to play for their country. We'll talk more about that coming up when we update you on what's going on in the World Baseball Classic especially from the Phillies' perspective. But I'm sure Ranger Suarez really wanted to pitch for Team Venezuela, who's playing pretty darn well in the World Baseball Classic. To be able to have the foresight and the maturity to say, man, uh, I feel something weird in my arm. i got to pull out. Uh, It's more important what I'm doing for the Philadelphia Phillies and my Major League Baseball team than what I'm able to do for Venezuela because I owe that to the Phillies to make the right call. There may be pitchers out there who they feel a little like something in the arm and just 
say, oh, whatever, I'm going to pitch through it because I want to pitch for my country. And they end up costing their Major League Baseball team. So what Ranger Suarez did was a good thing for the Philadelphia Phillies that he alerted them to that, that he pulled out of the tournament, that he returned back to spring training. I'm sure it wasn't the easiest decision in the world to take yourself out of the World Baseball Classic, but he did it to help the Philadelphia Phillies. And for that, he should be commended. And hopefully it ends up working out by him being fine and ready to go for the Phillies on opening day. And everything is good there. Here's where the concern pops in, though. I don't think Ranger Suarez is in any type of trouble. I think he should be okay for his first start of the year, which would most likely be the third game. Even if he's not, he won't. it doesn't seem like this is any type of extended absence or anything like that. It, the only reason he may miss a start is because we're so close to the regular season already, uh, and they might want to be cautious, especially since you've already got Painter missing for close to two months, it looks like. And there's not a great option behind the five guys you currently have set up to be in the rotation and Wheeler, Nola, uh, Suarez, Taiwan Walker, and Bailey Falter. I don't really want to see Christopher Sanchez in the starting rotation. I don't want to see Plasmeyer in the starting rotation to start the year. No, I want Suarez to be healthy. And I understand like being a little bit cautious before that though. So, but here's the concern. Let me, let me get right to it. The Phillies had a real, real long season last year. Between the lockout pushing the season back and making this past offseason shortened, between the World Series run and everything there and all those extra games and extra innings that were thrown and the long, long year that the Philadelphia Phillies went through. It was a fun year for us. It was a fun year for the players. But where that leaves them is now basically every guy on the roster had a career high in innings thrown last year. Like Anyone who contributed to that team at all had a career high in innings thrown. That's troubling for this year we're already seeing it now painters doesn't count because he wasn't at the major league level but suarez is one of those guys that he threw a lot last year for this team and we could be seeing the early signs of what i've talked about before on here and some people have said we should be looking for is that with that long of a season you could have early season injury concerns for pitchers because their bodies are worn down and they haven't get, been given as much time as they truly need to recover before hopping into the 2023 season. I know Zach Wheeler's looked rough in spring training. Maybe that has something to do with it. He could just be working on stuff too. I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into Zach Wheeler on our next episode. So you can go ahead and check that out on Tuesday when that comes out. But the biggest concern is we're already seeing signs of guys starting to wear down a little bit and it's just spring training. Once we get into the actual season and guys start throwing legitimate innings, we'll have to see how last year's innings load weighs on them in 2023 because it could be significant. We could be seeing multiple little tweaks and twinges to up to even major injuries for Philadelphia Phillies pitchers due to the increased workload that they're not used to. It's not a guarantee that it's happening. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just saying this is something we need to be aware of and – it's very possible it affects the Phillies early on in the season. I don't think it'll sink their season. It'll, it's just something to be aware of, and Raiders Suarez is the first thing. And the Phillies are absolutely aware of this. So when guys have issues like Ranger Suarez is having, they're going to be extra cautious. It might be, hey, you could have made that start, but we need you. we're going to need you in October and possibly November, depending on how long the season goes. But take it easy. We'll shut you down for a couple weeks and then, bring you on back. So be prepared for this to be a thing that's a theme throughout the early season for the Philadelphia Phillies. And then even in the later parts of the season, you'll, you'll go through the stretches where early season, you may see a couple mid season when they all get stretched out and the pitchers are in main shape of the season be fine. And then when you hit that dead arm period, that may come on sooner. Uh, so like instead of your arm feeling tired from the workload uh, as a pitcher in August and September, they may feel it in uh, July. I don't know. We haven't seen how these pitchers' bodies react to that number of innings before. So we're in uncharted waters for the Philadelphia Phillies. And it's not a guarantee it's going to go wrong. Just something to be cautious about. All that leads to is, hey, the Phillies are probably going to be careful with Ranger Suarez. He made the right decision to pull out of the World Baseball Classic. And let's keep an eye on the health of the rest of these guys to see how last season is affecting how they perform this year. Coming up, we're going to jump into the World Baseball Classic. Team USA played a couple games, a couple interesting results. The Phillies, well, one guy made an impact. If you haven't seen it yet, I'll tell you all about who. And there's an interesting discussion about the pitching on Team USA that I want to get into that I think is just a fun commentary on baseball in general on the world scale. We'll discuss coming up as we continue Locked on Phillies. 
All right, let me tell you about my friends over at LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. Listen, it's tough to hire the right people. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Yeah, that's right. You see it down there in the bottom corner if you're watching on YouTube for free. So what you do uh, as you go, you create a profile, you add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. You got screening questions and it makes it easy to focus on the candidates that you actually want to talk to. You're not just getting everybody. They filter them through for you and you can put on there exactly what you're looking for. Find the right experience and everything like that, the right qualifications, all that good stuff. All of these features is why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. So go ahead and check them out. I mean, LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. So post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on MLB. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on MLB to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. All right, let's talk a little World Baseball Classic. So Team USA, their first game was against Great Britain on Saturday night at 10 p.m. You may not have stayed up for it, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time because they're playing games out at Chase Field out there in Arizona. So if you didn't stay up for it, well, all you missed was Kyle Schwarber hitting a ball nearly into the pool, actually over the pool uh, in right center at Chase Field as Team USA took down Great Britain. J.T. Ramuto had a nice night starting at catcher. Uh, yeah, Schwarber looked great at the plate. Yeah, I mean, he dropped an absolute bomb. That guy is a monster. He's such a great home run hitter. I'm so excited for what he's going to do in a Philadelphia Phillies uniform to follow up being the National League leader in home runs last year. It's going to be great. So I can't wait to see what he brings to the table for the Phillies, and you're already seeing it in the World Baseball Classic. All fun, right? USA takes down Great Britain just like they're supposed to. Did you see who pitched for Great Britain? If you didn't, the starter for the Great Britain team in the World Baseball Classic against Team USA was Vance Worley. And he actually wasn't that bad. Man went, I think, like three scoreless or three strong innings against the lineup of basically the who's who of Major League Baseball all-stars and superstars. So Vance Worley, if you'll remember, pitched back uh, for the Phillies back in the mid-2000s. His last appearance in Major League Baseball was back in 2017. He had that great year in his first year with the Philadelphia Phillies where – uh, won a bunch of games, looked really good. We thought he was the next thing, got the nickname the Vanimal. He had that nasty two-seamer that just moved like crazy, uh, kind of cuts in on right-handed batters, but what he mostly did was he threw it into lefties, so it looked like it's coming way inside and then break back over the plate. It was fun. He threw like one of those in the second inning. That was just like the patented two-seamer, and I was just like, man, that brings back some memories. Vance Worley, that's a name I haven't heard in quite some time. So a fun blast from the past. And when you're watching some of these lower-level teams in the World Baseball Classic that you don't expect anything special out of, not like the USA or Dominican Republic or Japan, teams that are like top-shelf-level teams, but teams like the Great Britain, teams like Canada, you're going to hear some names that you've heard before at the Major League level and possibly former Phillies. It's like, oh, wow, I forgot that guy was a thing. Wonder what he's been up to these days. And then you go down a stats rabbit hole of what they've been doing. It's fun. That's a good time. So shout out Vance Worley, Philadelphia Phillies legend, for his uh, all right start against uh, the Team USA in the World Baseball Classic for Team Great Britain. Now, the USA played last night against Mexico. That game did not go as well. They gave up 11 runs. They lost 11 to 7, and they got just absolutely worked the pitchers they threw out there. And this brings me to an interesting point on the World Baseball Classic and Team USA's pitching. I saw a thread on Twitter of this. I want to find exactly who put it out uh, because it was an interesting commentary. And uh, I think I'm going to give proper credit. But basically, the ethos of the conversation is that, well, pitching looked really bad last night for the uh, – I almost said for the Philadelphia Phillies – for Team USA – uh, yeah, here's the tweet. It's uh, Seth with his family barbecue on Twitter. Great follow. Really great baseball information on there. If you're a Twitter geek and you're a baseball geek, go ahead and check out uh, Seth with his family barbecue on Twitter. They've, they've been around forever. You should know them already. But uh, here's the tweet. Uh, Scherzer, Scherzer, Verlander, DeGrom, Bieber, Cease, McClanahan, Gallon, Rodone, Nola, Wheeler, Musgrove, Strider, Freed, Burns, McKenzie, Manoa, et cetera, et cetera. All these dudes have legit reasons for not pitching 
for the USA and World Baseball Classic, but every pitcher in the league has a legit reason to. They go on to tweet, fact is Mexico has their number one pitcher, Urias. So does Dominican Republic, Sandy Alcantara. Uh, Puerto Rico, Diaz, Venezuela, uh, Perez or Lopez, Japan, Otani, and Darvish. With money at play, injury risk, I totally understand why guys don't want to do it, but it's notable that other countries get their best to pitch. Those are the threaded tweets from Cespedes Family Barbecue. So shout out to them for giving me a little bit of a jumping off point for this conversation. So the question is, why? Why are the top pitchers for other countries throwing for them? And why are the American pitchers not? Now, there's an interesting breakdown here that has to deal with how baseball is viewed in these countries and the type of pride you have in playing for a national team and the culture and sports in America that needs to get brought up. Let's start a little bit more basic, though, because it's, it's not like the World Cup. That's the thing. I think with the World Cup, it's very clear that the USA is just soccer is not put at a premium when it comes to uh, sports here in the United States. People don't care as much. People like baseball and basketball and football and hockey and those big sports more than they like soccer in the United States at the current time. So the better athletes play the more popular sports. Easy. Okay, well, baseball is America's pastime. Why doesn't America have more pride when it comes to the World Baseball Classic then? I mean, it really is their sport, right? Uh, as much as basically anything else besides what you're looking at in basketball and football. Those are like the big three American sports because you kind of share hockey with Canada. Not to go too far down a tangent. Baseball's America. That's what it is. So why can you not get these guys to play? First thing that I think contributes to that is naturally when you're a kid growing up, Major League Baseball is such a focus for you that that is the end-all be-all. It's the ultimate. And that dwarfs the World Baseball Classic immensely. None of these guys, none, not even the guys playing for the Team USA team, were growing up as like a seven, eight, nine-year-old kid thinking, I want to play in the World Baseball Classic one day. They were thinking, I want to play in the World Series. I want to play in Major League Baseball. I want to do this, that, and the other thing. I want to play for the Phillies or the Yankees or the Dodgers or teams that they grew up rooting for, not Team USA. Not that they're against playing for Team USA totally. They just don't value it as much. Now put yourself in the shoes of a Shohei Otani who grows up in Japan and becomes a professional baseball player over there and is a really darn good one. But it takes a while into his career, not that he's old, but it takes him to have a strong professional career in Japan before he's even considered an option for Major League Baseball. For a lot of these guys who come here from other countries, it's certainly realistic to think that they grew up not believing the MLB was a real possibility, regardless of how good they are, because it's a country away or in some cases like uh, full like side of the world away. So I think what that does is that creates more of a community in those countries as far as, hey, yeah, maybe one day I'll get a chance to play Major League Baseball. But I definitely want to play for Team Venezuela. I definitely want to play for Team Japan. I definitely want to play for Team Korea. I want to play for these teams like, like the furthering away of Major League Baseball from where these guys grew up as far as realistic goal for them to play at that level, I think makes it more, maybe I want to word this properly. I don't think it makes the World Baseball Classic like all that much more important, but I think it makes Major League Baseball itself, like playing at the Major League level, seem slightly less important because it was less of like the presumed goal for these players. So they see the opportunity to play for their country and they say, hey, uh, that's as equally as important to me as Major League Baseball or nearly. Now, you saw Ranger Suarez pull out for his Major League Baseball team because he felt some discomfort. I'm not saying these guys say World Baseball Classic is more important. Uh, I think the cultural differences and knowing that other sports, how important like playing for a national team is, because if you're from like a soccer centric nation, the national team is the ultimate goal that contributes. And then the differences in. Uh, growing up and everything like that and experiences. It, it's a deep dive that I'm not going to go totally into, but it's interesting why the USA seems to not be able to get the top pitchers to go out for their team. And that's fine. Injury risk, understand it. But why the rest of the world seems to do so well at getting their top arms to go out for them when it comes to the World Baseball Classic. Just interesting thoughts on that. Let me know in the comments how you feel and what you attribute that to, because I'm interested in people's perspective on that. 
Coming up, we're going to wrap, wrap up. We're going to wrap up <laughs> with a little off the pole. I asked you about your concern level for Andrew Painter's injury. Interesting results, but I think pretty measured ones. And we're going to discuss as we do our next segment of off the pole and our final segment of today's Locked On Phillies. All right, my friends over at Built Bar, the Built March Madness bracket is here. We know you have a favorite bar or puff, and now is your time to make it count. So go to builtmarchmadness.com to vote for your favorite. So go ahead and if you add the built bar like the churro, go ahead and vote that one through. My favorite is the peanut butter. Oh my goodness, it's so good. I gotta vote that one through to at least the final four. But you can go ahead and do that. Uh, and if you want, I, I know you you want like you're rooting for Tennessee. If you're rooting for Alabama, if you're rooting for one of these top basketball teams to win, you'll be voting for that bar too. So support your team, support your bar or puff. Go ahead and check it all out. And listen, you can get a free box of built when you go ahead and vote. So you're going to be entered in a drawing. So 50 lucky locked on listeners are going to get a free box of built bars. Not only that, but one locked on fan will win a 12 month subscription to built to have Built's best bars or puffs delivered monthly straight to your door. So that's awesome. You got to try Built Bar. They're the best protein bar ever. Go ahead and check them out. So again, run to BuiltMarchMadness.com right now to vote for your favorite bar or puff. And then you can pick up a box while you're there. You can vote every day in March. So hop in and support your pick. Go ahead and do that for my friends over at Built Bar and for yourself because you can win some good stuff from them. All right, let's jump into off the poll. So off the poll is where we ask a poll question on Twitter on the last episode of last week. And then the first episode of this week, we go and review the answers. So let's jump right into it. I have the poll right here. The question from our Locked On Phillies account was, uh, how concerned are you with Andrew Painter's UCL sprain? A couple options. Not concerned at all, slightly concerned, extremely concerned, or total panic. Now, only 3% of people who responded to this poll said total panic, which I think is right. I think that's the least rational of these options. There's no reason for total panic. The kid's 19. He could have been given, a, he could have had a full tear and needed Tommy John. I still don't think full panic should be right because you'll get him at 20 years old. He'll have gotten that taken care of. Full panic or total panic is not required at this time. 25% of responders said not concerned at all, uh, which I think is the next most rational or next least rational, I should say. I think that should have been second lowest, but actually less people said they were extremely concerned. Only 19% of people said they were extremely concerned with Andrew Painter's uh, elbow injury. 53% of responders, though, are right where I am, slightly concerned. You should have a slight concern. It's an elbow injury to a top prospect. That's never a good thing. It's never easy. Even in the easiest elbow recovery, there are potentials for setbacks, and it creates questions for the future. Not major questions, but like, What's going on with his arm? How do the injuries stack up? Will this become a consistent thing? How is his frame? And he's a big guy. It's like 6'7", 215. It, he'll be able to, or maybe like 225. Or whatever. I, I don't know exactly the weight. I haven't weighed him recently. <laughs> but he'll be able to carry the, the workload of a major league season. But can he now at 19? When will he grow into that? These are all concerns that should pop up slightly from this. So 53% of you voted for slightly concerned. I'm with you. Uh, those who voted for not concerned at all, uh, don't underestimate what a UCL sprain could do for this season uh, as far as just Andrew Painter's perspective, not the Phillies' perspective. It's something to be cautious about. And those who are extremely concerned are probably those that were in the boat with me to start and that you were super excited about Andrew Painter coming up. I don't know the extreme concern is necessary, but hey, nearly 20% of the people who responded to this poll feel that way. So uh, it shows that there's a, a healthy level of concern among the Philadelphia Phillies fan base uh, as to what the future holds for this kid. And it's an injury that definitely needs monitoring as the season goes on. And the Phillies will take care of that. They'll be super cautious, but that's how you feel about Andrew Painter's injury. And that's where I stand uh, as he heads towards a recovery from a UCL sprain. That's all for today's Locked on Phillies. I want to thank you for making Locked on Phillies your first listen every single day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We're available on YouTube, the Spotify app, Apple Music, all that good stuff. So go ahead and uh, check us out on all of your favorite platforms. And uh, make sure you make your next listen, your second listen, Locked on Fantasy Baseball. Win your league by listening to Matt and Dom every day as they bring you the best fantasy draft strategies. Find Locked on Fantasy Baseball wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube part of the Locked On Podcast Network, which is, of course, your team every single day.
So go ahead and check them out. Make sure you're rating, reviewing, subscribing on YouTube, all that good stuff. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you next time on the next episode of Locked on Phillies.